Not gonna lie, it's a little bit weird not using that intro in the name that I've used for so many years. But I do want to thank all of my subscribers for the support over the years, and I want to welcome you all to the inaugural edition of Raudeza Reviews. So I'm essentially expanding, and that's why I wanted to consolidate the name, the branding, whatever you want to call it. But definitely want to get more into kind of gaming, streaming, doing more reviews on shows, movies. I'm always going to do the collecting reviews, so don't worry, those are not going to go away. But I want to expand to getting into more news, a little bit more politics, things that I've wanted to do for a long time on this channel, and I'm going to be branching into that. But don't worry, guys, the core of this channel is going to remain the same, but I do want to branch into other topics, particularly current events, that I think are important and that are important to talk about. So for those of you who have followed me for many years, I hope that you stick around. I would love to have you. Anyways, by my genius logic, the only way that you can really move forward is to kind of go back in time a little bit. Hence why I'm going to be doing this review of <laughs> this figure. I know it's like really old, guys, but it was so badass. And since I mentioned that I had taken a lot of stuff out of storage, I hadn't seen this in a while. And, you know, basically I wanted to review it. So this is why we're getting this. So strap on, rev up the flux capacitor, because we're going back in time, baby. Are correct. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour... You're gonna see some serious shit. The original Blade film debuted in 1998 and in my opinion is phase one for everything that comes after it. It not only proved that a Marvel franchise can be successful both critically and commercially at the box office, it also proved that a Marvel character can be edgy, dark, mature, have an R rating and still be very successful. And what a badass character, most people didn't know who Blade was or that he was part of the Marvel Universe. Before it was chic to be geek, before the MCU and before Marvel films became mainstream and everybody loved them, there was Blade. I mean, he just exploded onto the scene, also known as the Daywalker. All of the powers of a vampire, none of the weaknesses. Of course, except, well, the IRS. Look at those morons. I paid my taxes over a year ago. Dad. What is it, sweetie? Did you see a scary picture in your picture book? That was last year's taxes. You have to pay again this year. No, because you see, I went ahead and year wise, I was counting forward from the last previous. Oh! <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, say what you will about Wesley Snipes' tax evasion. He did make Blade into his own and he really came into this character and it was totally badass. He owned it. Wesley Snipes is Blade in my opinion. It's also really cool that we're getting a reboot. I know Marshala Ali is going to kill it as the new Blade. I mean, I'm just really excited and what a better time to relook at this figure because it was so awesome and revolutionary when it came out as I will point out in the review. I also have to say, and I'm not being hyperbolic here, but thanks to characters like Blade and Wesley Snipes and how he embodied this character, if it wasn't for a film like Blade that debuted in 1998, there would be no Deadpool. I mean, I just gotta say it that way, it is the first rated R Marvel film and Deadpool really owes a lot to this bold character. So today we're gonna be reviewing A Blast From The Past, the Hot Toys version of Blade 2, the limited edition 1-6 scale figure. Let's take a closer look. You know guys, I hadn't seen this thing in such a long time that I actually thought that I didn't own it. And perchance as I was moving stuff out, I actually saw the box and I was like, holy shit, I definitely have to review this. The head sculpt on this figure is amazing, guys. I mean, just look at the presence. That is definitely Wesley Snipes. That is what we see in the film. I love the sunglasses here. It, I mean, it just looks so menacing. Check a look at the brow. The sculpt and the hair is fantastic. Even the little mustache is done so well. Everything looks really cool, guys. But I have to say, I do like this figure a lot more with the sunglasses. You have to remember this is an early Hot Toys figure when they were still kind of trying to refine their craft. Now, 
that is Wesley Snipes, okay? So it does look very much like him, but there's something about the eyes that look a little bit funny. I don't know what it is, guys. It just looks a little bit weird. Now, it's not bad by any means, but it does look a little bit off. Nevertheless, it's still representative of what Wesley Snipes looks like. And overall, this is a really, really cool head sculpt. I also like the tats, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. They're so detailed, and the way that they etched it into the actual skin looks really great. Overall, this head sculpt is fantastic, but I will say I do like it more with the glasses on. You know, it's a real shame that they didn't actually make Blade from the original film where he goes into the club and starts kicking everybody's ass because that body armor, I think, looks a lot cooler than this. Now, this does look very well done, guys, especially the materials. The one thing that I can say, whether it's the later figures or the early ones, is the materials that Hot Toys uses is always top notch. I love the leather here. That trench coat is amazing. He also has the inner lining of that vest. And if you can see inside of that, is kind of like the body armor which is really cool guys i love the belt and the velcro i mean everything just looks really well done i also have to say the inner lining of this jacket is awesome guys it has that nice red kind of sheen to it which really stands out it's basically a focal point now the trousers are equally amazing even though they look a little bit oversized for the figure nevertheless it does look really well done now the cool thing here is guys before we had the advanced ball joint system this figure was for me a prototype in terms of the overall body it is incredibly articulate especially in the ball joint system here you get some amazing dynamic poses because of the way that they engineered this body type it's really awesome now just look at that profile guys whether it's coming or going this figure looks amazing you're definitely going to want to mirror it for this reason alone look at the tats and the haircut in the back those tats are freaking amazing guys and they're really a fulcrum point in and of themselves i also love his actual sword katana look at the way that they actually put it into the back or integrate it into the coat amazing and of course you have this hefty coat i think there's a bit of a wire mesh inside so you can manipulate it a little bit but i mean just look guys this is freaking awesome it's legendary now when you're taking on an army of vampires you really do need to pack a lot of firepower. I absolutely love the look of this modified Mac 10. I particularly like the little bolts. You can obviously see this is a custom job. My only complaint with it is that I wish that it had a little bit more of a dry brush kind of overall wash on it so that it looks a little bit more used. Nevertheless, this is one of his signature weapons and it looks absolutely astounding. Now, the other criticism I have is that it's not functional at all. It's kind of static, but nevertheless, it still looks really awesome, guys. I mean, I'm not knocking it for looking like a bad now if you recall from the film he also uses these spikes to take out vampires I think this is really cool and they actually wrap around his thigh I love how neatly they look my only complaint about this aspect and it really sucks because it's kind of like a tease is that although we get the silver spikes which are very detailed we don't actually get the shotgun which I would love to have seen that would be amazing and an additional accessory like that really would have completed this figure and made it completely awesome but nevertheless we do have this it does look cool guys now this was a very interesting and weird time for hot toys in terms of the bases now they do look cool I will give them that and a lot of times they just kind of defaulted to the nut grabber which I'm not a very big fan of but whatever that's what we have now one of the things that were a little bit weird is that although the base was round it did have this kind of like triangular wedge which gave the name of the character instead of on the lip like we see in more traditional Hot Toys bases now. The only problem is that they tend to obscure the name on the flat portion of the base as it does here where it says Blade 2. And of course, the major complaint that I had with these early bases is that they were way too small for the figure and they never actually fit right. So if you had a figure that wasn't as articulate in terms of the feet, it would always be a pain in the ass to try to adjust to make it look okay, or you would have to sacrifice the actual stance. Nevertheless, this is what we got. Now here's where this piece really did shine because it came with a lot of accessories and not gimmicky ones, ones that were actually in the film. The first was the katana or sword that had the hilt with the spring-loaded blades for anybody stupid enough to try to take Blade's weapon away from him. That was pretty cool. And then we actually get the solid katana, which is really awesome. And this is very detailed, guys. And if you can see, it has the indentations for the spring-loaded blades. I think that's just a nice detail. The silver color looks awesome. And they're interchangeable, meaning you can take the blade and put it on the other one 
one. It's really cool. Now the sheath is hmm, normal at best, but whatever. It's what we got, guys. Now we do get an alternate costume, so to speak, in case you don't want to always have him in the trench coat. We get that black windbreaker with the holsters, which are functional, which look really cool, by the way. Now, here's the weird thing and the inconsistency in the weapons, and I'm not sure why. Those two pistols look amazing. There's a lot of detail there. I especially like the black offset against the silver, but the slide on them is spring-loaded and is fully functional, which is really cool. Just not sure why they didn't do it on the Mac 10. Whatever, they still look awesome, guys, and I'm just glad we have them. We also get the two blade batarangs, which I think are really cool, and I have to tell you, really nicely balanced. They actually fit very well on the figure, so they're not kind of like a pain in the ass or flopping around. In addition to that, we also get the kind of like knuckle darts, which are really cool. So when he's punching at somebody, he can like basically impale them with one of these darts, which I think is awesome. It's just a really cool accessory, guys. And that's what made this figure very, very collectible, is that we have all these additional accessories, which I think really make the figure and worth the price of admission, so to speak, at least back in those prices. Here's something really funny that happened to me. Back when I originally opened up this piece, I didn't even notice that it came with these ultraviolet bombs. They were just so small that I didn't see them in the packaging. When I took it out again for this review, I noticed that I had these really cool little things that I think are just like, you know, they're just awesome, guys. These little cool details that we see in the film are just nice to have. They're very detailed. Just be very careful with them, guys, because they are really small and they're very easy to lose. I'm just going to keep it in the box. And finally, of course, rounding out the last bit of accessories are six additional hands for various poses. And what I like about these figures, these early figures, is that every hand, I'm sure the same is true about the newer figures, but every hand really had a function and a purpose for every weapon, which is really cool, guys. I know Hot Toys still does it, but it was back then something very revolutionary that they did with 1-6 scale figures. And I have to say, it's very impressive. So we do have these things. And this figure is very malleable, guys. You can really do some dynamic poses. Yeah, so guys, these pieces go beyond Holy Grail. It's more of like, what the f are you asking for me? Or what kidney are you asking for me to buy this thing? Yeah, what the f is right? Just take a look at the aftermarket prices. This is what's listed on eBay right now for this figure. And this is conservative. This is on the lower side because I've seen them go for a hell of a lot more than this. So basically what I'm saying, guys, is if you own this figure and your house catches on fire, after you grab your loved ones and get the hell out of the house, you know what else you're going to grab before it catches on fire. That's what I'm saying. All right, guys, it's just it's a badass figure. What can I say? So that's my official review on the Hot Toys version of Blade 2, the limited edition 1-6 scale figure. As always, I thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next new edition of Raudeza Reviews. Just want to say one last thing. I hope to God one day they make the original Blade from the original movie. That, that figure would be amazing. I would buy that in a second. Also, guys, a little bit of advice. Um, don't, um, don't cheat on your taxes. Pay your taxes. Yeah. <laughs>